Hello, my name is Paul Bemis, and we're going to be talking about the new CoolSim 5 release, which has uh, just come out today. Some of the things in CoolSim 5 that are fundamentally different include external modeling, external flow modeling. Um, we've added inlets and outlets, general purpose inlets and outlets that allow us now to do things like exterior flow over buildings uh, or other objects. We can also do external heat exchangers and build generators and chillers. We can create generators uh, and look at the exhaust of the generators uh, under wind conditions to understand how they might uh, affect the cooling performance of adjacent equipment. These inlets can also be used internally, so you can use them inside a room as well. So you can have flow from diffusers in a standard room and do velocity contours and temperature contours. One of the exciting new things that we're doing in CoolSim 5 is the sharing of results using standard hyperlink uh, capability. And I'll show you how all these things work here briefly in a moment. First of all, the features of CoolSim 5, the big one is external flow. So now you have, in addition to the standard room editor, which normally is focused on internals, internal modeling such as raised floor, non-raised floor, we also have a external flow analysis capability. So we've added this feature. You just check this box and then you can hit this link right here and it will pop open a window. This window, this dialog window here, will allow you to set the room. So it sets the room condition. And I'm going to just bring CoolSim over and show this to you as we go. So here's CoolSim operating just the way it does normally, CoolSim 5, uh, typically focused on internal flow analysis. But if you just touch one of the walls and double click it or you uh, right mouse click the wall, you can do external flow. And as soon as you do that and start to set up the external flow specifications, here now it's no longer a data center, it is a domain. Uh, we used to call this a bounding box. Sometimes people still do. You can see the direction of the arrows there represent the wind direction. If I go to my external flow setting here, I can do things like set up the wind direction uh, with offset. So you can rotate the the offset here so uh, typically the top view of CoolSim is laid out with X in the right hand direction and Z straight down and Y straight up out of the page and that's how your model is laid out but you can offset that wind direction uh, here to adjust for the fact the building may not be oriented quite correctly on the compass and once you set the wind direction you can then set the wind speed uh, and direction so so once you have done the offset, you can set the wind direction here using this slider bar and you set it in degrees or just slide it around. And down here we can set the velocity of the air in feet per minute, meters per second, feet per second, miles per hour, or kilometers per hour. We can also set the air temperature for whatever we want. We also have a hyperlink here that takes you to the NOAA site for uh, information about wind in case you, and temperature in case you do not know it. This is a fairly comprehensive site and deals with uh, the entire uh, globe as long as there's data. So this is a fairly good site for you to get data. Most of you will know what the prevailing wind is in your area or conditions you need to be worried about in the case of a storm and that's what we're talking about here is a failure mode analysis so it's typically a storm. The uh, other thing we've done here is added the ability to do external heat exchangers. Now we took our PDU object that we typically use for heat dissipation inside the data center and we've added to it the ability to set delta T. Uh, these before were only load and we assumed a flow rate here I can set the delta T as well and so I can use it for both inside the room and I can use it outside the room. So an example of that would be uh, a chiller. So here I have a model that I'm going to be showing you in a moment and I've hidden one of the sides of this so you can see how we model it. So the way chillers generally work is air comes in the side and through a heat exchanger I'm up out of the top. So it is a bottom to top device just like this and so we've set this heat e HDU up to have bottom intake and top exhaust air coming in through the sides. These baffles are set for a percent area open that is typically associated with a screen so the percent area open is 60 percent on that baffle and then we just set them up and sit them on the top of the roof like that. So here I have a data center with a bunch of generators in front of it. We'll talk about those in a moment. But also we can use these HDUs. And 
The nice thing about them is that under a prevailing wind condition you can really see what's going on with those. So I'm going to pop over here and show you the air coming around those PDUs causing issues. And this is a shot of that. I've got a prevailing wind coming from uh, the left side of this building. You can see those path lines are, are having some trouble in certain places. The air coming out of them is wrapping around and going back into the intake of those devices. And you can see right here the air wrapping back around and getting sucked into the intake. This is exactly what happens here as well. You can see the space between these devices is fairly small and so there's going to be a high velocity uh, air created high velocity stream created there causing the low pressure and pulling that air down inside it uh, so the visualization on this is is quite nice uh, there's another plot that we've added to post on this that is really quite good it's called inlet temp averages and these are the contours of temperature on the inlets so the cooling capacity or heat dissipation capacity of these devices is correlated to the intake temperature. So here I can get a plot of that. Here's a plot of intake temperatures uh, as a function of color. So the minimum is 86, the maximum is 112. That's just the range that it's seeing. See in the center of the room it's not so much of a problem, but these generators are exhausting in this case and they're generating heat and that heat is getting uh, pulled into the intakes of these heat exchangers so these units in red are not going to perform nearly as well as these units in blue. I mentioned generators already. This is a generator model. You can see uh, the stack here. This is the exhaust coming out. Combustion, very high temperature, 900 degrees uh, coming out of the top of this. These are heat exchangers in the front uh, or front and back so the air is coming in through this passing by the uh, the big diesel generator and then back out the top. These general inlets and outlets can be used in CoolSim uh, pretty generically so you just pull them in. We have both baffles and inlets so here is a general purpose inlet. You can see that I can make them any size I want. I can set the flow rates on them. I can uh, make them an outlet uh, to the room or from the room, an inlet to the room. I can set the flow rate, set the temperature I can also specify the angle of the flow, which is quite nice. If I switch this to angle, you can see that, that arrow moving around in real time. I can set the angle of flow with a very simple slider bar kind of mechanism. No unit vectors. This is just an easy way to do it. And uh, you can set it up that way. You can also set it to be normal to the surface. So it's uh, straight perpendicular out. And you can also reverse the flow so it ends up uh, going out in the other direction. So. That's inlets and outlets, and what we use it for is to, is to create generators. So let me pop back over to my uh, external flow generators. So here's the external flow model I'm using. And in this particular model, you've got uh, some exhausts up here. So these uh, generators are stacked, and the exhausts are all running together and coming out the top. Uh, the outlet of the radiator or the heat exchanger for cooling the engine is one in the front and one in the back. Um, so there's the one on the back side and here's the one on the front side. Airflow in this direction you can see from the arrow is very strong uh, left to right. Uh, if we wanted to know the magnitude of that we could go to our external flow setting and find out that it is operating at uh, 60 miles an hour. We're in a 60 mile an hour wind, uh, 85 degree Fahrenheit. So that's our worst case condition wind and we can run that model. Models here run pretty pretty fast, they're pretty quick. Uh, let's take a look at some output from one of these models. One of the most interesting things to look at is external inlets by temperature and as you can see um, from this shot the wind is blowing again uh, directly from the, the left side. We can use a shortcut to, sh to view that. I just used a Z key and an N key so I took off perspective you can see the air coming and pushing that flow towards those heat exchangers. Now a lot of it is going up or we're seeing buoyancy here have an effect so the hot exhaust is exiting towards the top but it's also coming over and, and, and getting into those heat exchangers as well and causing some issues. But you can see the flow there is quite pronounced and quite good. You can see the heat exchangers dumping their heat on the front and then the exhaust coming out of the top. 
So some very uh, good quality, high resolution output uh, from, from CoolSim in this case. So you can put inlets and outlets on the front of a block. This is just a block. That's how we build it. So you put uh, here, these are the what we used to call radiators or heat exchangers. These are the liquid that's going to cool the generator. comes in through here and then exhausts out the top. The generator stack comes on the top there too. And again, you can set the flow rate and volumes with, uh, with the editors. Um, we can also, using the same feature, do flows from diffusers inside a room. So we can do an internal modeling in a room, flow from diffusers, velocity contours. I'm going to show you some of this. This is using some new capability in CoolSim as well. And here's an example of a simple room. Same idea, except we're using uh, it as an internal model, putting the diffusers up in the ceiling, having them angled at the right angle, and coming down and filling that room. This is often used for clean rooms or surgical ORs or even pathogen mitigation. If you're trying to reduce uh, the dead spots in the room caused by poor flow, this is uh, now you're able to do it inside of. Uh, same thing, velocity contours. You can look at the contours of velocity the same way. In uh, clean rooms, you want the no dead spots, what we call dead spots, areas of zero velocity. So you try to you try to minimize those. Same thing with temperature. You can do temperature contours as well. So here I've made these little people uh, out of blocks and put some heat load on them to mimic the behavior of buoyancy. And you can see the temperature plumes coming off, coming off the people right there. So you can use it for clean rooms, surgical ORs. I have a model here of a surgical OR I can show you. This is an OR uh, that we worked on recently. You can see the air coming straight down from on top and uh, the flow coming down and washing the patient who's laying on the table there and uh, people standing around who uh, may in some cases block some of the flow but this is the kind of analysis you can now do in CoolSim very fast and, and uh, very effectively. So one of the other features of CoolSim is the sharing of results with a hyperlink. This is um, I think very significant. You can do the entire CoolSim output report can be shared via hyperlink. So when, cool, when CoolSim finishes, you get uh, four emails. You get one that just says it started. So here's my job that started. Yep. And then here we have successful completion. It comes with a summary report. The summary report is an, a complete output uh, of the entire run in a PDF format. So you can see here that with external flow, what the size of the mesh was, how many cores were used. You can see there we used 5.4 million cells on that. Um, the area, the temperature parameters for the external flow, and, uh, and so forth. And, and it goes on down the line. So the entire output report is there. It also gives you the time that it takes to run. You can see that took a little over just about an hour uh, to run that simulation. And then the last thing it gives you is a hyperlink. Um, this is upon request. I'll show you how to do this in a moment. But if you flip a switch during the run cycle or doing a rerun of post, you'll get the entire output report. So here I'm able to just uh, select this and it gives me the entire report as a unique URL. And what I'm able to do is view each one of these images. I can either share the entire report with a colleague using this hyperlink uh, or I can use individual um, links to, to show a specific image. For example, if I wanted to show this image, I could make a screenshot of it, then grab the URL and put the URL behind the image. So when they select the image, it'll pop the full 3D window in front of them. So here's the PowerPoint, and you see here I have an image that I put in, and it says Select Image to View in 3D. Now this is a PowerPoint presentation, but you can save this off as a PDF, and it will do the same exact thing. And I'm able to take a selected image like this and just now click it and it will open a browser and show me that entire image in 3D. This requires no specialized software on the part of the consumer or the user, the person viewing it. They can view this anywhere, anywhere that supports a URL, including, uh, for example, your phone. You could send this URL and send it as a message or put it in an email and share this output with anybody, anywhere, in the world, as long as they have a connection to the internet and a browser. 
so this is going to allow 3D viewing of images in Word, PowerPoint, PDF, any, any document that you want. You'll be able to use this by burying the hyperlink behind the image. So CoolSim 5 has added uh, external flow analysis. It's uh, quite significant, but it can also be used for internal analysis as well. Inlets, outlets for things like ORs or, or uh, clean rooms or just general air movement. It's quite a bit of capability that we've added and we can also use it uh, to share results very, very effectively. In addition, we've just recently upgraded to a brand new cluster so we have more speed and capacity than ever before. And as a result, CoolSim just continues to be the best uh, tool in the market, best price and performance solution that you can find. Backed by the powerful Fluent Engine for Mesh Solve and Post, best uh, solver and, and mesh technology in the world, provides the accuracy you need, the fidelity you need, and at a price point you uh, can certainly afford. Thank you.